own power, the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by DuPont, presents the Sidney Howard dramatic masterpiece, Yellow Jack. Today is Army Day. More significant than ever this year, when the gallant saga of the American fighting man is being written every hour from Bataan and Australia, from Pearl Harbor and Ceylon. So it is especially fitting for us to recall on this day that the heroism of our time is the legacy of yesterday, as well as the guarantee of tomorrow. It is a proud company, the company of America's fighting sons, and there are none with more right to march in it than the soldiers stationed in Cuba in 1900 who offered their lives not in war, but in peace. Our play tonight is about the army heroes who defeated a mortal but mysterious enemy, freed the Western world of the plague of Yellow Jack, and made possible our inter-ocean lifeline, the Panama Canal. Tonight, with Tyrone Power as Major Walter Reed of the U.S. Army Medical Corps, the Cavalcade of America does homage to the heroic army men of 42 years ago, spiritual forefathers of the heroes Tyrone Power, the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by DuPont, presents the Sidney Howard dramatic masterpiece, Yellow Jack. Today is Army Day. More significant than ever this year, when the gallant saga of the American fighting man is being written every hour from Bataan and Australia, from Pearl Harbor and Ceylon. So it is especially fitting for us to recall on this day that the heroism of our time is the legacy of yesterday, as well as the guarantee of tomorrow. It is a proud company, the company of America's fighting sons, and there are none with more right to march in it than the soldiers stationed in Cuba in 1900 who offered their lives not in war, but in peace. Our play tonight is about the army heroes who defeated a mortal but mysterious enemy, freed the western world of the plague of Yellow Jack, and made possible our inter-ocean lifeline, the Panama Canal. Tonight, with Tyrone Power as Major Walter Reed of the U.S. Army Medical Corps, the Cavalcade of America does homage to the heroic army men of 42 years ago, spiritual forefathers of the heroes of today. keep on singing in the middle of this horror. Maybe they don't realize. They mustn't know how bad the Yellow Jack is. They know. They know. They've seen their comrades dying. And still they have a heart to sing. a hot time in the old town tonight. The war was over. And the Columbia barracks at Camido near Havana, Cuba, shimmered in the pluperfect heat of a broiling tropical sun. It was the summer of 1900, but still the soldiers of the U.S. Army stayed on at their posts. There was little for them to do except think of home and sing and talk of home. Is Cuba sure the wrong place to spend the summer? Yeah, the war's over. Why did they send us home? Drill and tote stretch and swab out the ambulance. Swab out everything. I don't like that smell of carbolic. And all the time waiting for our turn to go out. Feet first. You see, Yellow Jack, such afflictions are questions of fate. It behooves us to be philosophers where fate's concerned, which the Irish are, so long as their fate remains agreeable. I want to be home, raising a family, living a normal life. These docs think we enlisted and came down here so they can cut us up and squint at our insides? Now, now, be thinking of Major Reed and these men of science. How they expose themselves to the perils of this, worrying after the unknown truth like a bevy of bulldogs. I say it's Watch a... it. It's Major Reed. He's heard you. Ten, chum. 
All right, men. At ease. What's your name? Clinton. Warren G, sir. Private transportation unit. And you? Bush, Levi P, sir. Private quartermaster department. O'Hara, John J, sir. Acting sergeant in charge of the operating room, sir. You, I know, Mr. Brickerhoff. Yes, sir. Mr. O'Hara, you'll do well to be less eloquent about doctors. You'll all do well to talk less about this epidemic. Epidemics are best not talked about. There's retreat. You'd better be off. Yes, yes sir. sir. Uh, Dr. Reed, will you come into the laboratory, please? Dr. Carroll has come back. Carroll? Carroll. All right. What's news from the camp at Pinar? There's no doubt about your diagnosis, Chief. Malicious malaria in my eye. It's yellow, Jack. Going great guns, too. Dropping like five. Is that all you have to tell us? Do you expect anything? After two months of this and how many autopsies? Made a record for thoroughness at any rate. Oh, I can't stand much more of this. I look out there to see and watch our transport steaming home and I daren't think what they may be carrying. Now we've taken Cuba on. Taken it on with this awful thing smoldering in it. Waiting its chance to jump over home to us. To Philadelphia and New Orleans and... And to know that we've had it under our microscopes a thousand times and never seen it. And General Woods lost a third of his staff in the past month. He knows it was Yellow Jack, not Rough Riders, that licked the Spaniards here. And it'll lick us if we don't lick it first. And our commission. You, Agramonte. And you, Carol. And Lazier and I. We were sent down here to stop this horror. To isolate a microbe and find a cure. And we failed. Failed completely. It isn't easy to admit that. Well, we've tried every angle, Chief. Give it up. It's no use. I'm calling the commission tonight to disband it. It won't be a long session, and then we'll go home. Well, the most we could do would be to keep on working. We have at least discredited everyone else. You know, I ran into one puzzler out there at Pinar. Oh, I've heard enough puzzlers I can't solve. Well, this is a funny one. In case of a soldier, 6 July 12th, died on the 18th. But he hadn't been near the disease for over a month before he was took sick. What was that? They had him locked up in the guardhouse. There, he lay in that guardhouse for three days after, with eight other prisoners. And they didn't catch it. Not even the one who slept in his blankets after he died. How about contaminated food or water? The whole outfit ate and drank the same. The man may have been extra susceptible, maybe. If we could explain why we don't catch it... What did you say? Uh, nothing. I'll see you tonight. Go clean up. At 8.30, gentlemen. All right. Good night. Oh, what was it that crawled or jumped or flew through that guardhouse window, bit that one prisoner and went back where it came from? What was it? What was it? the end of your tether, my advice to you and the members of your commission is call it a day. Go home. My friend Major Gorgas can assure you you are leaving this epidemic in worthy hands. The Marine Hospital Corps, with which I have the honor to be connected... Excuse me, Colonel Torrey. I called the commission to disband it tonight. Three hours ago, I was certain we should disband. Even now, I... I hesitate to suggest that we go on. The only course which remains open to us leads us so far afield, seems so beset with danger that I stand appalled before it. Don't be mysterious. What is the course? To set our microscopes aside Say. and concentrate on new methods of investigation. How? By turning our minds to how yellow fever spreads, Agramonte. From man to man and village to village and even across the sea. How about that, Gorgas? I should like to know something about that. I've come to suspect a middleman here. An infection carrier. In all likelihood, an insect. Probably a mosquito. Did you say mosquito, Reed? Oh, you can't be serious, Reed. These fads are the curse of modern medicine. Is medical science going insect mad? Where have you been, Tory? You never hear of Smith's Texas fever tick? How about Bruce and the African tsetse fly? And malaria's just been nailed to a mosquito. 
Oh, God bless you, Reed. Mosquitoes are meat and drink to me. <laughs> Enough of theories. We must draw the line against this somewhere. Major Gorgas, I should like to hear what you have to say. Well, why the mosquito, Reed? Why not the flea, the louse, or the homely bedbug? Because Yellow Jack's not confined to the louse and bedbug belt. The cleanest parts of town may be the deadliest. And it's at its worst in summer, the mosquito season. Reed, let me speak. Speak on, Lazier. We're not going home. We're not going to quit because we haven't got the guts to exceed instructions. Reed's right about this, and I'll go it alone if I have to. Only I won't have to. There's a crazy old troglodyte here in this town. An old Scotsman with spectacles and side whiskers. Finley, his oh, name is. Finley, Finley. what are you talking about? You don't me? propose going to him. Why not? Or... He's been working on this angle for years. He's got his particular guilty mosquito all picked out. He's a crank. No more a harmless crank. He may be, Colonel. He may be completely mad. If he is, though, he's, he has a brave kind of madness. The jumping forward kind that's always too risky for the completely sane. You have your convictions. I have only my curiosity. What do you others think? Carol. Well, this isn't my line, but go ahead. Well, I can think of nothing better to suggest. Finley's got to be tried. There's no doubt of it. There is a very grave doubt, Doctor. The scheme isn't possible. Why not? Aren't you forgetting that yellow fever is unlike other diseases? You don't give it to guinea pigs or monkeys or mice. You can't give it to any animal except man. Uh, I'd forgotten that. Well, think it of now. How can you test Dr. Finley's mosquitoes by any conceivable experiment? By experimenting on men. Oh, but no, Reed, Dr. Reed. Reed, you don't propose to use human guinea pigs. Do you realize this is human vivisection? Hey, well, you are you there, going All right, all right. If we fail a few harmless mosquito bites, if we succeed, we shall have risked a few dozen lives to save countless thousands. No, no, you've got to be stopped. You're not independent of Washington, American public opinion, the press and the pulpit. You know how they stand on animal vivisection. If you're ready, Major Gorgas, I'll bid these gentlemen good evening. Good evening, Colonel. Good evening. Good night, Gorgas. Good, good night, Gorgas. Good night. Well, Lazier, Carol, Agromonte. Well, if you'd only told us, Reed, we could have backed you up. You know what Colonel Torrey can do to you, Chief. Yes, there's no doubt of what Colonel Torrey can do. I see no reason, though, why he or anyone should know what we're up to from now on. Oh. But, uh, Doctor, would it be possible to experiment on men in secret? It's got to be. You're right, Reed. Men, though... men. That's got to be two. I'm afraid so. I'm afraid so. Men. Major Reed. I have the honor to present my colleague, Dr. Finlay, for these many years, a distinguished leader of our profession here in Havana. How do you do, Doctor? How do you do? Dr. Finlay, this is Dr. Lassier and Hi, Dr. Hi, Dr. Finlay. How do you do? We shall sit here in the patio, if you don't mind, gentlemen. My office is dark. I see your faces more clearly here in the sun. Dr. Finlay, shall we omit the preliminaries? I suspect you can guess what our errand is. My fellow scientists do not come off and hear, Major. We come to join you, Doctor, in the war you have waged many years alone. Anything we can do, we'll do, if you will help us. We need your knowledge. We want what you have learned about your mosquito. The eggs will do. For 19 years, <laughs> science has laughed at me, Major at the cracked old Finlay and his mosquitoes, and nowhere more cruelly than through American army doctors. Now you come running to me to save your faces. Will you be surprised if I have no impulse to share my secret? We shall be deeply disappointed, Dr. Finlay. And uh, we shall hope to persuade you. We're likely to prove your case for you, Doctor, if you... Prove my case? 
You mean you doubt my discovery? I doubt everything. Well, I'm sure. Da- I have cherished my great discovery for 19 years. Do you expect me to give it up to you? To make use of it and get glory from it? Glory is I... the idea, Doctor. I'm no stranger to waiting, Dr. Finley. All my life long, my prayer has been that I might in some way alleviate human suffering. I think this may be my chance as well as yours. Uh, the proof you demand lies beyond any man's power. We don't feel that. You cannot test my mosquito without risking life. There's an army of occupation outside this town with nothing to do. Well, let the but... soldiers wait, Lazier. They'll keep. They'll be there any time we need them. We'll start this off with ourselves. You, gentlemen? Yes. But only three. Agramonti's had yellow fever. Yes. You after me, Carol. You have five kids. I've only one. We'll hold you in reserve, Reed. Why didn't we think of this before? But the risk, gentlemen. You, you must put this mad idea out of your minds. And you said we would need to be ruthless, Finley. Let him have your mosquito eggs, Doctor. I think you had better let them have the eggs. Very well. When I give them into your hands, I give you 19 years of my life. I do it gladly. Listening to Tyrone Power in Sidney Howard's Yellow Jack, sponsored by DuPont, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. As our play continues, Dr. Agramonti and a nurse are entering a ward where the men most gravely ill of Yellow Jack are confined. How many more mosquitoes to infect this time, Dr. Agramonti? I have three here. I would like them to bite. I them. know. Sickest men we have. Yes. Over here, please. Yes. Hot now, I want some water. I'm swimming the river. Outside, I'm delirious. delirious. Fever of 104. It's gone down a degree in the last hour. Hold me under. Let me pray with her. Let me up. Mother, just turn the blankets back, please, nurse, so I can get at him. You're getting good at this, doctor. Tap. Tap. Uh uh. Come, come. Get out of that bottle. Ah. Bite him, little insect. Bite him. Ah. There. Insect number 47, Miss Blake. Insect 47. Infected from a severe case. Fourth day of illness. There you are. It's all written out. straight through the ward till every boy there's got a bite on the belly. He keeps each one of them mosquitoes in a kind of bottle. Major Reed, there's a man for thinking of bright ideas. I think it's a lousy idea. Just one more trick they thought up to put over on us. Ain't sick boys got enough in their minds without scratching bites? And anyway, how could a mosquito carry yellow jack? Insect may be small, but germs are smaller. It's a question of relative size and capacity. There's the symptom. Let's go. Mosquito number 98. Affected from severe case on the day of death. What, again? Huh? Huh. Never say die, Carol. Never say die. No, Lazier. Why not? You've had your turn. Even your second turn. And the ten days have passed without results. You've got to keep on trying. Reed. Is there any use you're keeping on trying? I... No. I'm... Have you boys really come to your senses? It's your turn now, Carol. My turn? Yes, I'm stepping out. This is your show now, Carol. Here's number 98 waiting for you. Ready? I will be rushed into this. 
Grown men coaxing a bottle of mosquito to bite them. Sucking thermometers for days afterwards. Can't you see that's funny? Better not go through with it, Carol, unless you can. Scientifically and properly. Oh. Give me that tube there. Take these. They're the deadliest. I don't like their expressions. I'll take this one. Number 46. One from the boy that had just been brought into the ward. <laughs> she looks starved. Must you make fun of this? Will you please let me have my own way with this nonsense? I warn you, Carol, you are being both slovenly and frivolous about this. Come on, black beauty. Come on. Bite me. Tap. Tap. Bite me. <laughs> I have come to the end of my patience now. You, Carol, are you not supposed to be testing infection by mosquitoes? So I let the little thing bite me, didn't I? Then you went to the autopsy room this morning. You performed an autopsy on a man just dead of yellow fever. When you were testing one source of infection, you deliberately exposed yourself to another. Do you expect me to chuck my work for ethereal ears already exploded? I protest for all scientific work. What are you yapping about, Reed? If either of us had come down with it, it had been one thing. But we haven't. Mosquito theory's a bunk. All right. We're in earnest now. This time you go into isolation before... No, we... sir, I'm through. I'm having a boat for home. Yellow Jack, I kiss a goodbye. Coop me up, not me. I'm an active man. This thing's got me crazy as it is. It's got me all off my feet, and that's a fact it has. I woke up this morning feeling how lousy. I made up my mind then that How I... lousy? Headache? Like a dog's breakfast all morning. I shouldn't wonder if I picked up some malaria. Won't you examine started... your blood for malaria? Yeah, just now I didn't find anything. Feverish? Not particularly, no. Blood negative and no fever. Somehow I doubt it's being malaria, Carol. What? You've got yellow jack. <laughs> Major Gorgas? I'd like to believe it, Reed, but you must admit that Carol had contact with the disease in other ways. Gorgas is perfectly right, Reed. We have no defense. I believe our mosquitoes have the real deadly stuff in them. In spite of Gorgas' doubt, I believe it. In spite of Carol's frivolous approach, I believe it. And by heaven, we've got enough evidence to take to General Leonard Wood. He'll give us the facilities to prove it's this mosquito... An isolation camp where we can experiment under ideal conditions. And volunteers from the army to experiment on. I think the time has come for that at last. After all... Huh. So, we fall back on the army after all, eh? As soldiers should, Agramonte. As soldiers should. Do you think Wood will even consider that? I don't know, Gorgas. All I know is Lazier and Carol showed the way. And I know this will give the army a new kind of hero. Maybe you think Leonard Wood won't see that. And uh, now, what was that again? $300 compensation. Just for volunteers. Uh, volunteers to catch Yellow Jack and die of it. They got a nerve. Three hundred dollars. I'm just telling you what I heard. Yeah, General Wood fixed it up with Major Reed. I heard him telling one of our sergeants. Would you take a chance on it? Three hundred dollars is a lot of Mazuma. Uh, I wouldn't for three thousand. I'll keep my health if the Major's got no objections. Yeah. Catch Yellow Jack. What do uh, they think they're doing? Advance science, benefit humanity. Yeah. Hey, soldiers, humanity. Did you 
want something, Mr. O'Hara? We've come to volunteer, Major Reed. Uh, the both of us, sir. For the experiment. Us too, sir. We're in it too, Major. You know the risk? Oh, yes, sir. We know all right. You've heard what the compensation is? Yes, sir, we've heard, only... We're volunteering in the interest of science. And for the benefit of humanity. The only condition on which we volunteer... Is that we receive no compensation, sir. Gentlemen, I salute you. you to live in the dirty house. I've packed it full of every stinking byproduct of this disease. Everything that can spread it around, if anything can. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And you're to spend three weeks in there. That's all, gentlemen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Are you ready, Brinkerhoff and O'Hara? There's somebody to be after taking our pictures. You want to send off, John? I'll give you a send-off. Will you give me the mosquitoes, Agramonte? I'm cold. Two minutes ago, the fever was burning you up. Huh? Well, I got a chill now. My ears is roaring, my teeth is chattering, my head... You'll not give yourself any yellow jack ahead of me, sucking thermometers one minute and chattering your jaws together the next. This is agreed to be both of us or neither. Being hard on me, John. You know I wouldn't take advantage of you if I could help it. Are you... Are you feeling... No, you can't catch it unless I do. Now tell me I... John, you wouldn't like to speak that Shakespeare for me, would you? I'm scared for you, Brink. Speak that Shakespeare, John. What he says about death. All right. Cowards die many times before their death. Valiant never tasted death but once. Of all the wonders that I yet have heard, it seems most strange to me that men should fear seeing the death necessary end will come when it will come. Thank you, John. Now you're at that thermometer again. Give it to me. I'll smash it out. Look at it, John. See if I ain't got something wrong with me. Uh, holy saints of all. Did I ask you to go down to the ambulance and tell them? Last night, dropped again, now it's six this morning, again eight. The highs were beautifully jaundiced today, too. Uh, how about the gums, nurse? A little bleeding, Major Gorgas. Headache and nausea still troublesome, though? He's very uncomfortable. Splendid. I should defer to the Major's diagnosis, but I cannot think of a symptom the boy has omitted. It's beautiful. The fourth beautiful. day of his sickness, too. And how long did you say between the bite and the first symptom? Three days, nine and a half hours. But for Dr. Finley... Nineteen years. The credit is yours, Finley. No. I conceived the truth, Major Reed. You delivered it to life. Together we have added to the world's arsenal of knowledge. You promised me you'd make me eat my doubts, Reed. <laughs> Didn't know eating doubt could be such a pleasure. I'm going out after this mosquito now. We'll clean up. Cuba, all the Caribbean after that Panama. You've made the Panama Canal possible. 
May I shake your hand? If that boy's convinced you, Gorgas, that he did get the infection from the mosquito, and if those other two in the dirty house have shown you that the disease cannot be contracted except from the mosquito, then you may. My hand, Gorgas, and those of a sergeant and three buck privates as well. Here is our star, Tyrone Power. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Collier. I know that I speak for the cavalcade players as well as myself when I say that all of us are proud to have been able to salute the men of our army on this Army Day. Thank you. Before we sign off, a word about Cavalcade next Monday. At the same time next week, Cavalcade will present a continental uniform starring the distinguished screen player Basil Rathbone. It is a powerful and dramatic story of Benedict Arnold and America's great betrayal. Don't forget, next Monday night, Cavalcade presents Basil Rathbone in a continental uniform. Tyrone Power appeared tonight by courtesy of 20th Century Fox, in whose production this, above all, he will soon be seen. The orchestra and original score tonight were under the personal direction of Don Voorhees. This is Clayton Collier sending best wishes from our sponsor, the DuPont Company. program came to you from New York. This is the National Broadcasting Company.